Okay, um, before I start, I, I do want to take a moment uh, to thank all of you for being great fans last Friday night at our boys soccer game against Belmont Hill. Um, I also want to thank our security squad for keeping everybody in line. Um, <laughs> We'll stir, we're still working on staying behind the line, but uh, you, you guys did a great job. Um, I want to thank in particular Laura uh, Smith for being the leader in organizing the pep rally, and along with Malachi Johns and Andrew Agosti and Brandon Inspector Townsend, who took the time to come and see me on Friday. And we spent a good half an hour uh, talking about uh, things that I felt were important to us a conversation about sportsmanship, fan behavior, our place in the ISL, uh, and how we are seen by others. And I, I do think that they, they took the conversation to heart and, and were, really, uh, were able to run with it. So I really appreciate and thank you all for, for doing that last Friday. Um, so I shy away from speaking in chapel. Um, there, I'm up here several times uh, or in front of groups of people several times during the year. Most of them are command performances that come along with my role at the school. So I will speak at athletic presentations, award presentations, the Hall of Fame induction, and at the end of the year at lawn ceremony. Most of the content uh, or the matter of those talks is often predetermined, and so that makes it a little easier. But at least once a year, maybe twice, uh, we all get, as a faculty, we all will get an email that will ask us to speak in chapel about something that's important to us. It only has to be five or seven minutes long, and that makes it sound like it's not that hard. Um, but it will come. Um, as I read the email, I often feel guilty for not doing my part. But public speaking is something that's never been a strength of mine. Um, uh, I like to do rather than speak. Um, so oftentimes I just push the delete button and busy myself uh, with tasks that I'm more comfortable doing. But somewhere deep down I knew that this day would come. My husband even asked if he wanted me to stay home from work so he could come watch and I said no, that's okay. <laughs> um, so here I am and I've been thinking about this a long time. Um, but when I try to put my thoughts into context uh, and what I want to say today, uh, I thought of the pandemic and the pandemic and how it led to the cancellation. I was afraid this was going to happen, but I'll get through it. Of the spring of 2020, next the fall, and then the winter. We canceled a total of 751 games for 49 teams and over 350 of you sitting out there in athletes who have graduated. There were no Wednesday or Saturday games, no ISL championships, no NEPSAC tournaments to set as a goal. We didn't wash any uniforms, no bus rides, no team dinners, no pregame rituals, no hanging out in the locker rooms. There were no locker rooms at all for that matter. Uh, no holiday tournaments, no cold pizza because you missed dinner after a game. Uh, no joyous celebrations after win, or hard tears after hard-fought losses. Last spring, we were able to get back to a modified season, but it just wasn't the same. Don't get me wrong, it was great. It was great to be able to start competing again, but we had limited games against a limited number of opponents. Sometimes we played those opponents two and three times within a week. There were no titles or championships at stake. JV teams had lost the most, but we were all just happy to be competing again. This fall, I have wondered how many of us have forgotten all those missed opportunities that for so long we took for granted. I know I was starting to forget. We were competing again. Overall, things were going well, but it wasn't all great. And then on October 15th, in my box is another email plea from Mr. Chapman to speak at chapel. And so I'm still thinking, and I did it quickly and responded to the email right away because I knew if I hesitated, I would find an excuse not to do it. But this is something that's important to me, and it is my turn. 
You see, the day before Mr. Chapman's email, on October 14th, I was at St. Sebastian's School at an ISL head of school AD meeting. I don't know how many of you know that at least two times a year, the heads of all 16 ISL schools and the respective athletic directors meet as one group. You know it's a special occasion because all my AD colleagues are in what we would call special dress. They're all wearing coats and ties. None of them ever wear a coat or tie to an AD's meeting. But there we are, 36 of us sitting around a table to discuss items that affect the league. This, is our, this was our first in-person meeting since October of 2019, when we all met at the Governor's Academy. Being back in this setting, all fancy, important people seated around tables draped in black tablecloths, set up in a large circle, brought back many thoughts and emotions. You see, my first season coaching in the ISL was in 1985. I was the Brooks Varsity field hockey coach, and in many ways, the, lo the league looked just the same then as it does now. There were two big exceptions. River School was an all-boys school. St. Paul's was also part of the ISL. Over the next 20 years, in addition to field hockey, I coached varsity lacrosse, softball, and basketball. During that time, I always felt a great deal of camaraderie amongst the coaches I competed against and looked forward to game days and the end of season meetings when we would socialize and relive our many escapades. What I never realized then was the value of the league as a whole. Until my first head of school athletic directors meeting in the spring of 2016 at Milton Academy. In addition to discussing items such as out of season coaching policy, age eligibility, and voting on motions that would change the bylaws, it was at this meeting that in a letter to the ISL heads of school that St. Paul's communicated their intention of withdrawing from the league following the 2016-2017 school year and communicated that their school had been in violation of the league bylaws concerning merit-based financial aid. During the next season, 16-17, St. Paul's maintained their league schedule, but played with non-league standing, meaning that St. Paul's was ineligible for league rankings, league championships, or any postseason honors. Over the next couple of months, there was an application process to select a school that would replace the St. Paul's in the ISL. Six schools went through a very demanding process that included an interview of the applying school head and their ED in front of the ISL steering committee. Six schools that you all know well and whom we compete against had their hearts set on becoming a member of our league. They all put a great deal of time and effort into the process. In the end, only one was accepted, Tabor Academy. I tell you this story because I was reminded on that Thursday, two weeks ago, how special it is and how much schools value being a part of our league. It is something we should not take for granted, as I did for so many years. More importantly, we should not take the opportunity to compete every Wednesday and Saturday for granted. I fear that we are quickly forgetting what it was like to not be able to play games. What we had with our interscholastic program and being part of the ISL is special and brings with it great responsibility. As I am reminded of this responsibility, I think of why I don't take these opportunities for granted. I grew up in a country and at a time when girls did not play sports. Organized competition didn't really exist or did on a very limited basis and to this day is not part of a public school system. I was fortunate to grow up with two brothers who played sports and a father who treated us all the same. And when it came time to hitting ground balls in the backyard, I was as good as either of, them, either of my two brothers, probably better on the ground, not in the air. I came to the United States to go to college and studied physical education. The lack of opportunities for women's sports 
in Mexico is probably the reason I'm still here today, is it was never my intention to stay. Not one year, much less 50, which will be next spring. But then I say, as they say, life happens, and here I am. So this is why I do what I do, and why I care about the little things the way I do. Yes, I care about the wins and losses, but I care even more about the experience for every student that competes. And I care about how we are representing our school on and off the field and in the stands. This is why it is so frustrating to get a phone call or an email from a fellow athletic director after a game recounting an incident of poor behavior or unacceptable language. To me, it is a lack of respect for the game, our school, and each other. I ask all of you out there to remember that when you are competing, when you are wearing a Brooks jersey, you are representing all of us. Many of you know opponents on other teams, <clears throat> but most of you may feel you are competing anonymously, that you can hide behind that anonymity. I remind you that you're wearing a jersey that has Brooks written across the front of it, and that it is all your opponents need to know. You are Brooks School. I want you to take a moment and think of the best Brooks School athlete you know, the one you look up to or have incredible respect for. I have been here for a long time and I'm so extremely fortunate to have known many of them. For fear of leaving someone out, I'm not going to list them. But I ask you, who is the best Brooks athlete you have had the privilege of being on a team with or watching compete? Now put aside their physical abilities and look at what they have in common. If you are thinking of any of the Brooks athletes I have in mind, here's what I know about them. They are hardworking. They are fierce competitors. They are tremendous teammates. And they are extremely humble. And they know that their actions speak louder than their words. For most, if not all of us sitting here, no matter how hard we try, we will not be able to perform at the level that these athletes have performed or continue to perform. But we, what we can and what we should strive to do is emulate their character. If you are new to Brooks and have had the opportunity to know athletes of who I speak, please take the time to ask your coach to tell you about them. One thing I know is that will it, bring, it will bring a smile to their face. As a fan, I ask you to remember your actions and words speak for all of us and reflect on all of us. I realize that in the real world, the current role models for fan behavior are not great and that our opponent's fans may have a different standard. But we work really hard to be better than our opponents on the field and on the court. And I ask us to try to be the same, to be better on the sidelines. That brings me back to the ADs meeting, the ISL heads ADs meeting I was sitting in a week ago today, two weeks ago today. Bill Burke, the current head of the St. Sebastian Schools and president of the steering committee, handed each member of the group of the heads school and ADs a copy of the ISL bylaws Appendix A, Independent School League, Code of Conduct, and Essential Understandings for Member Schools. He then asked each person to read a paragraph and move around the circle until they reached the end of the document. I would like to recreate that exercise here and have asked our fall team captains to join me up front. So if you guys would jump up, please. Okay, Lucy's going to begin. This document presents the mutual understandings of all ISL heads of school. It is to be shared by ISL athletic directors annually with all coaches who are then expected to support these values with their teams, both through their actions and in their expectations for player and team conduct. All ISL coaches and players must remember that in all athletic contexts, they represent all schools in the league. The motto of the Independent School League presents the guidance and shared philosophy of our community of distinct secondary schools. Striving together, 
through athletic competition to achieve the highest degree of integrity, sportsmanship, fair play, and mutual respect in preparation for good citizenship and leadership in society. Athletics in the Independent School League are conducted according to the following code of conduct. The ISL is proud of the behavior and sportsmanship displayed by its players, coaches, and fans. We value spirited and fair play as well as positive support for our players and teams in order to ensure that our expected level of decorum continues each season and each game we ask that all members of the isl continually renew their efforts to abide by the ideals of our league players and coaches shall at all times represent themselves and their schools with honor proper conduct and good sportsmanship they shall understand that competitive rivalries are encouraged but that disrespect for opponents is unsportsmanlike and lessens the value of the rivalries. They shall confine the competitiveness to the game of the field, uh, to the field, and in particular behave properly on the sidelines and in the locker rooms bef both before and after games. Players and coaches shall comply fully with the rulings of the officials. In no way, either by voice, action, or gesture, shall they demonstrate dissatisfaction with the decisions made. They must never forget that they represent their school. ISL schools will not tolerate at their contests any spectator, either student or adult, whose behavior is disrespectful toward players, officials, coaches, or other spectators. Nor will ISL schools permit any type of behavior that either detracts from the proper conduct of the game or disadvantages a player or team. In order to bolster our deeply valued association and strengthen our commitment to our motto and code of conduct, ISL heads of school endorse the following essential understanding. All ISL schools share the perspective that the experiences inherent in team building and athletic competition strengthen our students' character. The quest for excellence that is part of their daily classroom experience should also be manifest on our playing fields. Indeed, our playing fields are an extension of our classrooms and need to represent the best values of our institutions. All athletes, coaches, and spectators from ISL schools will at all times demonstrate respect for each other by cheering for their own teams but not against one another, uh, oh, but not against the other, by not tolerating profanity or profane actions, by opposing any sort of trash talk, or attempt to humiliate opposing players or teams in any manner, both during games and away from games, verbally, physically, or through digital means. School heads and athletic directors will work to uphold these ideals on a school-wide basis involving fans as well as participants. All ISL coaches must be firmly committed as educators to teaching not only competitive skills, but also the attitudes necessary to achieve the highest standards of respect and sportsmanship articulated by the league. Coaches must take the lead in limiting lopsided competitions, preventing humiliating behavior or playing tactics, congratulating opposing players, coaches, and teams at the end of games, and reinforcing a commitment to fair play in all circumstances. Every school in the league should field teams with confidence that every coach is as concerned with the health and safety of opposing players as with his or her own. All ISL member schools will adhere conscientiously to league agreements regarding admissions, recruitment, and financial aid principles, procedures, and awards. All ISL school heads and athletic directors commit to communicate openly and directly with one another and to address concerns effectively and cooperatively when and if they arise. Thank you. Thank you. Please have a seat. So yesterday afternoon, I was standing out in the cold rain uh, watching the girls' soccer game. And I had a colleague say to me, it is on days like today that it makes you wonder why we do what we do. I thought for a moment, and I did not respond, because my response would have probably been rather sarcastic. But I don't wonder. I know why I do what I do, and it doesn't matter what the weather is. I know how fortunate I am to have this opportunity, and I hope you guys feel the same way. Thank you.